Hello and welcome, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and in this week's training I'm going to show you how to create this incredible mobile barcode scanner complete with mobile scanning. Just click and scan, it's going to be that easy. I cannot wait to show you, so let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I've got an incredible point of sale application that I'm gonna show you every step of the way. And that's gonna be complete with this incredibly cool menu that we're gonna be creating, these dynamic pictures. I'm also going to show you how you can quickly and easily scan in items just like this. So if we add an item, we do it through a point of sale, it's gonna be just scanning it and quickly like this. And very, very easily, it'll scan any items just like that, automatically adding it to your point of sale. So it's going to be a really incredible training. I've got so much to show you. So we're going to get started right away on this. So not only am I going to show you how I built this from the beginning, every step of the way, every line of code, every formula, every function, but I'm going to also show you this incredible application called Barcode to PC that is going to help you tie all this together and connect everything just over a Wi-Fi without any wires, just there. It's going to be incredible. I cannot wait. But before I do that, I really want to make sure that you know about everything that we have going on. I've got a brand new incredible Patreon account. If you like this application, if you want to download these things a few days earlier, if you want to get a PDF code workbook, or if you want to download the entire video, or maybe you even want to get all these resources, all these pictures, all these icons, I'm going to pack all that into some really incredible packages in our Patreon account, starting at just $3 a month, incredibly cheap, and you can get tons and tons of benefits. So go ahead and head over to our Patreon account. I'll include the link down below. That's brand new. That's going to help us out. Make sure that these videos are for free. You can download this application absolutely free using the links down below, either with your email or Facebook Messenger. I bring these to you each and every Tuesday. I just ask a few things. If you could just subscribe to our channel, of course, go ahead and click that like. And don't forget to comment below. I always like to hear your thoughts, ideas, feedback, and comments. That helps us out. All right, we're going to be creating this incredible mobile point of sale, full mobile scanning, and it's going to show you every step of the way, just like you saw. But first, I want to show you how I created this application. I'm going to walk you step by step. Now, as opposed to creating it from scratch, that would take probably about five or six hours. I want to kind of trim it down, but don't worry. When I do that, it allows me to go every step of the way. I can go a little bit slower because I'm not typing, and I can show you every step, every shape, every formula, again, every line of code. So we're going to get on that. But what I want to do is I want to share with you so you can get started a heads up. Let me share with you this incredible application that's called Barcode 2 PC. It works on your local network. It works with your Apple phone. It works with your Android based phone or anything like that. It's really great. It's called Barcode. And that's what I'm using. I've found this. It's really, really cool. There's a really cool free. You can use it free. Try it for free. And then if you want some more other features, that they, they have a really good paid for version. In fact, I got a discount below that's going to help. I talked to the owner because I really like this application. And uh, so he's going to offer us a 10% discount using our code Excel for freelancers. There's a free version and they got lifetime licenses, meaning it's like a one-time payment. And then the license is forever. So if we pick the basic or pro version, there's a monthly scan limit. But of course, the program will automatically reset set itself each and every month so we don't have to worry about that that's called so if you want to get started go ahead and click download it's absolutely free to download what you want to do is you want the desktop version of this and you want the app version of this so you want to download it for on your app either an android app or your apple phone app download the app barcode to pc and also download the exe file because they're going to work together we're going to go step by step into that a little bit later but i want to show you more on this mobile point of sale application that I have created and I'm going to share with you today. We have created point of sale in the past, but this one's going to contain mobile scanning and that's really, really important because it's great to be able to click a few buttons, but most people want some type of way to scan in barcodes. They want to, you know, if you're in a small shop, you want to be able to use it. And today we don't even need to buy a barcode scanner anymore because we can use our phones effectively and easily, whether it's 2D barcodes or 3D barcodes, this barcode PC will handle that for you. All right, so what do we have here? Let's go over an overview, and then we're gonna get into the nuts and bolts of this and show you exactly how I created this. Okay, so first of all, we got just a basic menu. So we've got categories. These are our main categories. You can create as many as you want. And then we have like subcategories, like tomatoes, condiments, meats here. We've got cold cuts, seafood. So that's all based on a list of 
products, right? We have a list of products and that's located here in our product list. Each product contains a UPC code. That's that barcode that you saw, an item name, a category, a type, brand, origin, unit of measure, price, and a picture. That picture file is really, really important. Those picture files I have located all in a single folder here in our product pictures. So this product picture, I've got these actually available on our Patreon account. When you see additional resources, I'm gonna start including all of these and all the icons that are gonna go into it. So that means if you wanna recreate this and follow me along, you can do that now because I'm actually including all these in a zip file every single week inside our Patreon account. So make sure you get signed up on that. And that's a really, really cool. So many great features on that Patreon account. All right, so what we have all those pictures here and we've got the picture names located here only the picture names right because what we want to do is we want to attach a folder that way when you get this list and you get signed up on our patreon you're going to have a list of pictures all you need to do is take all these pictures and then put them inside a specific folder now that folder is located in our admin so we have a product picture folder this is my current file path when you get your file all you need to do is just set your own path we didn't include a browse button but you could add that in simply copy the path and put that here we don't need the extra extra backslash because that's going to get included inside the code the same thing with the icon folder we're going to be building these icons and i'm going to show you how we can put these space them out according those icons are what they're located here we've got one for dairy and if you notice we have two colors of each icon like when i click on it notice that dairy goes to green but if i click on something else it goes to white so we've got two of each i've got a green one and i've got a white one inside my file so you see dairy here this is in white and green fish in white and green groceries in white and green and so on and so forth except for the print and the uh, buttons uh, right arrow button those are on our buttons those are only included inside the button so we only need a single color of those okay so we've got those in the folder so that's in our admin screen i've also got product categories now product categories are really going to help us because we're going to be able to categorize them we know all of our categories we could use a named range for this in which we have we use a dynamic name range i've also got our icons assigned to each one that way when i build this item list i can do that inside that means you can i'm going to show you how to build your own list and we're going to use a single vba macro to line these up and guide these very very easily okay so we've got a list of white icons this dairy dairy png or dairy green it's going to notice the green so each one for the green ends in green that's how we're going to be able to space those out i've also got a dynamic tax name you could put gst you could also put in a dynamic right here if your rate's different custom footer message that footer message is going to go at the bottom of the POS and also I've got a signed cashier now the cashier I've given them named range to that to make it easier inside the formulas so notice this is the assigned cashier that is the cashier name up here I've also got a footer message this one's called footer message and I've got this called a tax rate and I've got this called the tax name okay? and I've also got some icons here okay so we understand the admin is relatively simple and we got the products we went over now we also want a list of orders I want to track all the orders the order ID the date and time the cashier the total amount if there was a payment made and then the change given yeah, that's for each order inside the order items is given each item each item in the order for example order number one zero zero four had approximately six items in that each one we're gonna have the upc code the item name the quantity the price the total the order row this is the order row meaning the order row here notice this is row 11 this is row 12 we can also delete the items i forgot to show that to you earlier but we can delete them and we'll get a lot home we can add payments and print it and next and do a whole lot of things so it's going to be really really cool we got so much to cover on this all right so uh in the outer items we have that order row and then we have the database row this is the database row three four five these are formulas that way if we were to delete one it would automatically just delete here so we could delete it and then all of these numbers would automatically be correct they would all shift because it's based on a formula that's why we use it so inside the ps all right so that's basically the overview of everything we've got it's a relatively simple database the database is just products orders and order items ran and, and a basic admin screen so everything we're keeping really really simple on this one because there's a lot to go over so what i want to do is i want to really focus on the mobile aspect of this because that's what we haven't done so we're going to go over this and then the code is relatively simple and so basically what we have here is i have how do we design this well the first thing we have is just a simple color here i've just assigned this color i'm going to bring this down and this is just the color that i've assigned the background this is just that green color i'm using this if you want to know what color sometimes you don't understand you see i use different color palettes and things like that well 
this color palette here I'm going to be using here today we're using flow so notice it's got the red so today I'm using flow but we could use other ones so keep that in mind if you want to match that this one's called flow the one I'm using note if, if your colors are different you would just change this color to show the color whichever color you want we're going to use flow okay so what I want to do is I want this uh, header up here and I also want this basically I've got a column a single column column C also with the same color so that column C is filled with that same green color okay now if we take a look we've got some things here we've got some call how do we get this shape how do we get this kind of menu shape it's very very cool but how do we do that well we do that with a bunch of about three different types of shapes I've got one shape here if we take a look at this shape this is basically a single rounding corner single rounded corner if we were to insert a shape here and we take a look at that we can find that single rounded corner right here it's called single rounded corner so if I were to insert that we've got that single rounded corner right here we can round it as much as we want right but so we take a look at that now if I were to turn it around like this you'd see we'd have the same pretty much the same effect so there's no difference on this one it's relatively simple notice here I've got another shape here this one is also the single round the corner but this one of course is just simply inverted right so if we were to invert it like that we get the same shape that's all that these two shapes are and that was that's what rounds out our lovely little thing here so we can see that all right so let's put those back where they belong right I'm gonna put them back right up here I could use VBA to line them up and so all they are is simply just lined up and then the uh, vertical will take care of notice how it automatically and then wherever this one went I'm just going to line that I guess we could probably line it up using VBA as far as the left position but the vertical is automatically taken care of all right so that's how we got this so now what about these buttons here these buttons if we look at those take a look at this this button is simply a double rounded corner so if we were to insert a shape here we have that double rounded corner which is here it's called round same side corner here so if I take a look at that that's basically what I've done and I've just turned it like this and then I've what I've done is I've also increased the roundness so like this and then what we want to do is we add some font on that so if we had add some font let's say let's say we put some text in here notice it's kind of like uh, all different shapes so how do we get that to be the proper shape so we can do it a few different ways when we go into the shape styles or text effects or home right we see the font here so this one right here you see the vertical text or okay text or rotate text down or rotate text up that is the one that we want to deal with so also when you go into the format styles and shape here and then what you want to do is you want to go through the text okay so if we go to another text box we'll move that over again so we see that we want to just want to get that up so if we use rotate 90 degrees 90 degree rotate that's the one we want that's how we're going to get that text and then of course I've just simply noticed that it's no longer right I've actually put it on the bottom that's how we're going to get it and then of course I've just colored all I've done is simply color it that color green so that's all we did to get that so let's move that back where it belongs here but I, the macro will also take care of that so that's all I had to do there to get that done all right so we've got that there and that's how we get the shape so all all these shapes are is just simply these shapes here if we were to put a border on I've got multiple ones in case you want to see we can get an idea of what that would look like to see them you see if we put this outline on we can really get an idea of how they're placed right so we can see that very very easily now let's just left justify those so that they're automatically lined up so we can see get a good idea of how these are placed so that's all I've done to give it this really cool menu now it is VBA that's going to change those colors and change those icons and that's what we're going to go into right now let's go ahead and update these we don't need an outline on that but I did want to show you that okay and this one too all right so we understand how we're basically using these shapes to create a menu so all I need to do is when I select one what I want to do is I want to make sure that I know the menu item here this is one this is two this is three and that's going to be located in b4 so b4 is going to take on our menu item and I've also given each one a specific name notice this is called main menu item one the name of the shape main menu item two and so on and so forth this icon here if we take a look at this it's called cat icon white one or category icon white one this is called category let's unselect that this is called category icon green so the greens have a different name but they all end with the same number five right so we always know so if I click on an icon I want the same shape so regardless if I click on the shape I want the same macro to run so those numbers that we've numbered them are going to be play a real important role in that so keep that in mind that's why we've named them differently 
icons, category icon green, or with the shape itself, main menu, item five. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, so why don't we get into the macro that's going to show you how to create this menu. It's relatively simple. So let's get into that right now. All right, so let's get into that. If the developers tab is where you're going to find the VBA, Alt F11 is a shortcut. It'll get you there. If you don't have that developers, you can go into the file options and then just click on the customizer ribbon. Make sure you've selected the developer. That'll get you there. All right, so inside the developer, I've got just two modules, each with a few macros. So we're gonna go over those. First one we're gonna go on is set the categories. Now, when I run this macro, all that's gonna do is just line up these categories a little bit better, and then it's gonna set them up so that we're setting up the icons, setting up these buttons, all lining them up. So that way, if you add additional categories, you add additional icons, they're all gonna be taken care of. Now, you just wanna make sure that your icons are located in the icon folder here. That's where they can be found. Okay, so that's very, very important. All right, so back into the VBA we go. What we want to do is we've, I've got a bunch of uh, dimension variables here. We're going to go over them as we go over this uh, specific application. Okay, first thing is the setting the categories. Now with the POS, that POS is that POS sheet. That's the name of the sheet there that we've called there. And that is this main sheet here, POS. Okay, so we're going to be referring to that as POS. Inside that, we're going to focus on the shapes. The first thing what I want to do is I want to remove any of the icons that might be there. If I'm going to replace those icons or I've got new icons, I want to update those icons. I want to remove any existing ones and then replace them. So each one, and we're going to focus on that. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to call it a specific variable called icon shape. And this is already dimensioned as a shape. So when we do for each icon shape, in dot shapes remember this is already called out the sheet so it's pos dot shapes and that means for every single shape on that sheet what i want to do is i want to call out only specific icons in this case i want to, these shapes called category icon white or category but nothing else notice these are called main menu something different so i'm really focused on these category icons what i want to do is i want to remove any existing ones anything with category icon in the name to do that what we're going to do is we're going to use the in string function and the name the icon shape the name of the shape we're going to simply check if the name of that shape contains the text cat icon and that does not equal zero that means it is contained in there then i'm going to delete that i also want to delete any types category type anything with category type what is category type well it is this category type right here this this shape right here notice this is called cat type one this is cat type two here so i want to make sure to delete these because these are going to get created from our sample here so they're going to get created automatically all we need is that sample here to create those so those get removed and deleted and i just want to make sure we clear those out if we're changing anything here we're going to do that so i want to basically create this menu through vba with some of the shapes that we have all right, so to do that, we need to remove all these first. So we're going to delete those. And just in case they're not there, this we do want to wrap that in on air, resume next, and on air, go to zero. So our first step is to do just that, removing. Also, I want to set the left position. I want to set it into a variable. Now, this left position, this one here, is a double variable. Here, I've got left position, top position as double, and width as double, meaning they can be numerical, and I also want them to contain decimals, okay? So that's because they are very specific and not necessarily whole numbers. So left position as going to C1 plus 45. So basically, I want this, the left position plus a little bit more to the right and that's 45 so that's how we're going to get that that's how we're going to be able to get that i want that left position that's going to be the starting left position and regardless so that way if we increase this and we run the macro it's going to be regardless because it's based on the c1 the left position of whatever's in c1 so we're going to put that into variable i also want to put the top position into a constant it's going to start out at three and then it's going to grow as we add more buttons I also want to set the icon folder. This is a string variable. It's based on that icon folder inside the admin C4. That is this icon folder right here located in C4. So we have that. I'm going to put that into a variable because it is that folder in which we are going to need to pull those icons. Okay. Then when I'm going to run a loop, I want to run a loop all the categories. Right. Remember we mentioned this. We've got certain up to 10 different categories. So I'm going to run a loop from 8 all the way to 17. And I'm going to pull those categories out, whatever they're here, 
and pull those categories. Now, to get those categories, all we need to do to know which categories is just we need to run an advanced filter, getting those unique categories. I've already done that, and so we have unique categories. So I know that I've got you know about six categories or so to do this. So we're going to start off with just these five, actually five categories here. So we've got this. So what I want to run a loop from all the way from eight to seventeen, or one to ten in this case. And then any, the first time we have an empty, we're just going to exit out. So in this case, only five of those. Okay, so that's just what we're going to do inside a loop because I want to pull all those. So four category number equals one to ten. First of all, the shapes main menu item in the category width. We've already got these shapes set up. They're already here. Okay, one's called again. Here's those shapes here. Those shapes are called main menu one main menu two. So it is these shapes that we're going to be focusing on. So it's these shapes. I want to give them this name. I want to put the dairy in the name and I want to make sure it's main menu one. So main menu and category number. This is going to loop equals right the width. I want to set the width to the height of C. Why? What, what does that mean? Remember, we've turned this button around. This is a little bit confusing, right? This is, this is why it gets a little bit confusing for these. That's why I did the macro. Notice that when we did this shape, the width, let's take a look at this format. Notice that we have the height. Look at the height is 1.42. The width here is 0.42. So normally, but it's actually the width becomes the height because we've turned it around. Remember, normally it's like that. Right. So that's why we have the width and height change. Right. So a little bit confusing on that than we normally do. But that's cool because we get to learn something new. So what I want to do is basically the width of this, the width of that shape. I want to set to the height of C2 to C3. What does that mean there? You see these two rows c2 c3 i want the height of this shape actually the width the height the width uh, we'll call it height equal to the height of this cell these two cells that means every single button is going to actually be the exact height of these two rows so that way whatever the rows are is going to set so what i want to do is just the rows of those notice the like seven like let's say two to three has a certain height right the, the, the height of those two combined i want that basically i want the same height of the button but because we've turned this button around like this it is actually the width notice the width of this in this case it's the width so that's why the width of the shape, right? It's kind of kind of strange, right? And the width becomes the height. That's why we're focused on the width because it's turned around. So keep that in mind. It's going to be able to height. So we're going to set the width same as height of two rows. So now what I want to do is I want to set the height. The height is 102. The height is, in this case, it's our width. It's just going to set that width. This is 102, right? So if it's longer or shorter, basically I want to just do that. This is the height, right? So the height becomes the width. And that's going to be set to 102. So we set that very, because we want them all the same. Then what I want to do is I want to set the top position. Now the top position of this shape is going to be the top position. So it's going to be in this case three, right? And the left position is going to become the left position. So we're basically setting this shape up here. Now what I want to do is I want to add text to the shape. I want to make sure that the text dairy is also the same as our first one. So how do we know if we're going categories one through 10, all, how do I get this? It's B and then it's seven plus one, right? B8. So if we add seven, we know that once. So that's all I've done here inside the code here. So it's going to be shapes, main menu, category number, the text frame, the text range, the text, the text of that shape is going to be equal to admin B seven plus the category number. That's going to be the category name. And that's how we assign that category name so now that we have that we also have the top position the top position is going to be equal to the main menu one right in this case we can set all the top positions basically because they're all going to be the same so that's why i've chosen a specific one the width is going to be plus the shapes of the menu this is the top basically this sets the top position this line of code is a little bit confusing because i've turned things around right i've turned them around so basically all we need to know is the width is going to be the top and what this is macro is going to do is just going to be able to line these up right so it's it's not you don't need to, once they're lined up and you set your categories if you're not adding new categories you don't need to run this macro the icon file I want to get that icon file it's going to be located on our icon folder and then what I want to do is I want to extract first of all I want to extract the white one and then I want to set the white one so the white one is located where that white one is located directly inside here in column C 7 plus S. so we're going to extract that white one to get that white icon from the folder we're going to we're going to set that whole file name it's going to be the icon folder 
and the backslash, the admin C, remember it's in column C, seven plus the category number. That's gonna set the file name for the white icon. And then what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that if it's not blank, and the directory of it, I mean, I wanna to check to file path to make sure it's an accurate file path. If it passes both of those, meaning it's not blank, the value in the cell is not blank, and the directory, it's a valid file path, then what I wanna do is I wanna create that. I wanna create that. And so to do that, we're gonna insert the pictures, right? So pictures, dot pictures, already on the POS, insert, we're inserting that icon file, we're giving it a specific name, I'm going to call it the category icon white, and then the category number, category icon, and remember, that is why we already deleted the category icons up here, so we're adding the new one up here, and it's called white and the category number, okay, category icon white, okay, keep that in mind, then with that, all we're going to do is we're going to place that, the first thing what I want to do with that category is I want to lock the aspect ratio, I want to set the height, very specific height to 17, Theoretically, we could set the height to basically the height of this minus a little bit. That might be better. That way, in case you increase or decrease your row width, the height would be dynamic based on the height. We could do that as well. So you could base it on this and then minus 2 or minus 3, something like that. The left position is going to be based on C1 plus 18. The top position is going to be based on C, the top position. Why are we calling out POS again? We're calling out this sheet again because we're inside another width. Remember, first we're inside the POS, but then we go inside another width. So this one we have to, again, call out the sheet number. C, so in this case, C and 2, 2 times. So basically all this formula does is going to add that top position. It's going to keep going down. So basically the top position of this one is lower than this one. It's lower than this one. So we're using a formula and we're simply pasting it down, simply down. So basically the top one, the first one, we're using a formula based on this, based on the selected menu, which is in B4. The category number here, the category number based on this as we move down, as we move down. So the category number, let's just say for the first one, let's say the first one is one right category number one minus one well that's going to be zero if i multiply two times zero we're going to get zero right so all we're going to do is we're going to say c2 is the top plus five is the top position that means we want the first one right here on c2 the second one we want on c4 right down a little bit under that but under that. so how are we going to get that it's going to be c2 plus the second one's going to be category number two minus one so that's going to be one one times two is two. So if we add two plus two, we're gonna get four. So C4 is the top position plus five. So it's gonna be a little bit down. So basically this sets the top position of each individual icon. And then what we wanna do is we wanna assign a macro to it. Then we're gonna to get to that macro shortly. It's called category select. So we assign a macro to that icon. And that means whether they select an icon or whether they select the shape, it's going to be the same thing. Icon of the shape. So basically, I want to assign the same macro to whether they're clicking on the icon or whether they're clicking on the shape itself. So we're assigning a macro to that icon. That is the white icon that we focused on. We're going to do the exact same thing for the green icon. Let's set that the green. This one's going to be the green. I should change that green icon. And this one's going to be the green. Green icon is located in column D. We're doing exactly the same thing. Everything's the same. We're going to place it in exactly the same. That green icon is located in column D. So the only difference in this case is we're using a column D. Everything else is going to be the same. Notice D and then 7. Everything else we have is exactly the same. So we're going to place that icon. We're going to extract it. Place that column icon directly on top of the white icon. I want them right in the, I want them the same size. And I want them placed in the same area. Because as soon as we run the next macro, everything's going to be, going to be hidden. The white icon's going to be either hidden or the white icon's going to be shown or the green or something like that. So all we're doing is placing these icons. We're extracting these icons and we're placing them. And here all we're doing is just assigning the name of the category. So basically all we're doing is we're assigning the name to the button here. We're adding the icons, and we're placing the icons in the right place, first the white one, then the green one. So that's all we're doing inside that exact macro. The next macro, category select, this is the macro that runs when we select a category, and is that macro that we're going to go over next. So inside this category select, this is the macro that's been assigned to these buttons here, both the buttons and the icons here. So in this macro, what I basically want to do is to happen is I want to have 
a filter based on whatever's in here. So meets filter, I only want to show, and I only want to show the categories that are so located here. So for example, in groceries, we see we have, that was spelled wrong, olive oil. We've got three items here, right? And I want to make sure that those three particular types show up here inside the products, right? So how are we going to do that? Basically, we want to run an advanced filter. And I want to select the groceries here. And inside those groceries, I want to show all of the types that are located. I want to take each one of these types and I want to create shapes based on that. So for example, inside our here, we have here all of olive oil okay so we have those three items so i want those three items to show up inside those as categories so when i select groceries i want to show olive oil i want to show vinegar i want to show condiments and all of those things that are located right here then when i select the olive oils now i select groceries now you see the spelling is correct and i want to show those three types of olive oils okay so that's what i want that's a macro and so for this macro loan all i want to do is determine the types that are located inside that and then show these based on shapes and to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this sample shape called sample type I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to give it a rename it. I'm going to give it a text. That text is going to be based on a loop that we run through over here. So in other words, we're going to take whatever they've put in, whatever they've clicked, we're going to put it right here into K3. I'm going to run this as a criteria. And they're going to have an advanced filter. We want those results to come here. Determining based on the number of results, we're going to loop from three all the way to the last row. For each result, we are going to then create a shape. We're going to give it the name of the shape, and we're going to give it a specific shape name. Those shape names are going to be all category type one, type two here, and then type three here. Okay, so that's what we want to do. So we're going to do that inside the macro. That's the macro that's been assigned to both these icons and these categories here. So inside the VBA, we're going to do just that. We're going to focus on the POS sheet. Again, what we want to do is we want to make sure that if there's any category types or any products that might be showed, the products are what's located when I select it. These are the ones that are called products, right? So if there's any products, if I switch, if I switch it, I want to make sure not only that the particular shapes are gone, I want to make sure that there's any products are gone, right? So if I switch, in other words, let's say I've got some muscles here. If I switch categories, I want to one, clear out all these types. Two, I want to clear out all the products associated with those. So I need to clear all those out. Now we call our products, notice our product groups called product three, product here it's called product four, and product five. So they're all given names on these. So I want to make sure that we do just that. And I'll show you why they don't start at one at some point. But we're going to go over that. So basically, I want to clear out both of those shapes. So we know that these start with products. The text product is in each one of them. The shapes are called product. So product one, three, and four. These, of course, are called category type. So based on those names, what we can do is we can remove those shapes because they all have specific names. And to do that, we, again, do for each icon in the shapes, in the sheep, for every single shape inside that sheet, we're going to loop through. For only those sheets that contain the name category type, we are going to remove it here. I delete those shapes. Also, for every single name or group, in this case, product that contain the word product, we want to delete that shape only for those. So we want to make sure we give very unique names. We certainly don't want our buttons to have that product name. We certainly don't want our samples to, to have that name. Notice it says product P-R-O-D, but not the full word. So we want to make sure that we're naming things very, very specifically. So we do just that inside the code. So that's going to remove If there's any issues, we want to make sure to wrap that in on air, resume next, and on air, go to zero. Once we have removed all the types and all the products, we can then determine based on there all the things. The first thing what I want to do is look inside B4, and I want to place whatever they have. So the first thing what I need to do, I need to know, have they clicked here type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, or type 5? That number is going to go located in B4. Notice, look how B4 changes. 1, 2, three, four. So how do I do that? Well, what I want to do is I want to extract that number. If we look in the shapes, we see this is called main menu item three, right? Main menu item three. Let's count the number of characters, right? We've got four here. We've got another four on the menu. So that's eight total plus item. We, this is the number of characters, main menu item three. That's 12 characters plus 13 includes the number. But 12 is the important thing, 12. Now, let's take a look at the icon. The icon, again, is called cat icon white. So this has got three. This has four. That's seven, right? This has five characters. So again, 
this has 12 characters. So if I know, regardless of whether they click on the icon or whether they click on the shape, if I remove the first 12 characters, what is that going to leave me with? It is going to leave me with that number. I want to extract that number. It is that number that I'm going to put directly inside B4. So when they click on here, it is that number. And regardless of whether they click on the icon or click on the shape, that's why they're named so specifically. If I can extract the name of the shape that they clicked on, and then what I can do is remove, in this case, category icon green, if I can remove that, it is automatically going to extract. So notice again here, category icon green, same thing. It's also got the first 12 characters. Let's click on the single shape here, category icon green. Also, again, 12 characters. So all I need to do is remove the first and leave me with four. And I need to do that in VBA. So how do we do that? Well, we do that using application caller. So application caller is simply the name of the shape they call it. If we were to try to run this macro directly from VBA, we would have an error simply because there's no shape that called this macro called the macro by clicking the player f5 that's not going to do it so keep that in mind this type of when we use application caller we must run it from a specific shape that's actually calling the macro so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take that the full text of that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the left the left 12 the first 12 characters of that text using the left function what am i going to do i'm going to extract those first 12 characters. I want to use the replace. I'm going to replace those first 12 characters and I'm going to replace them with nothing. When I take out those first 12 characters, it is simply going to leave me with that number. That is the number that I want to place in B4. Once I know that number, it becomes menu number. I know what it, menu numbers. If I know what menu number they're called, then I can extract that. So menu number, we're putting that into a variable based on B4. The next thing what I want to do is I want to adjust the menus, right? So the top menu shape width I want to set the height and the width automatic. Well, let me show you what that is. We saw those two shapes. We didn't see it. Let's take a look at this shape here. This shape is called top menu shape. Remember this shape here, right? We That's called top menu shape. And remember this shape here. This we're calling bottom menu shape, right? Notice that those two shapes change. As I click a menu, notice that the length of these two shapes change, right? So what is the length of this, this shape right here? Well, basically, it's the length of from two to five, right? So it's the length of basically four different rows. And what about this one? Well, this one's basically the length of all the way down here. Basically, it's going to be the number of rows. So we can determine the number of rows because I need to adjust these two shapes, the height or the width of these two shapes, the width in this, this case of these two shapes, I need to adjust based on the number of rows, right? So as I select down, this one gets longer, this one gets shorter. So we need a formula to do that and it's going to be based on this number, right? If I know this is menu number four, I need to know the top one, right, is going to need to be a total of six rows, right? The width of six different rows, okay? So we can do that. So we're going to use a formula. So basically, I'm simply sizing this and sizing this according to what was selected here. Notice how each one grows. And that's how we get this really, really cool effect on that. So we do that for with these two lines of code. So the top menu, that top menu shape, is going to be equal to the height, right? All I'm doing is I'm simply taking two rows, two rows of heights, A2 and 3. Well, how many am I multiplying that time? Well, in this case, let's say I'm going to, let's say it's this one, right? In this case, it's only one, right? We, in this case, selected menu two, I want it to be one. I want it to be the row of two, right? nothing else, right? The height of two to three, right? Nothing else. So that's how we're going to do that. So let's take a look at that. The height is going to be multiplied times B4. Now, B4 is located that menu item. So if B4, let's say B4 is two. Let's say B4 is two. Two minus one is one. So one times the height is simply one. So it's simply the height of those two rows. So that's all. But however, if B4, let's say B4 is one, right? Let's say it's the first menu item. The first menu item, what is the height of that shape? Well, it's completely gone, right? You notice it's not even there. So that would basically, the height would be zero, right? So we do just that. Now, keep in mind, when I say height, right, it's width. I'm, I know it's confusing, but remember, we've turned that shape around, right? Turn that shape around. So the width becomes the height. The height becomes the width. A little bit confusing. So, so let's say this is one. One minus one is zero. Zero times the height is zero. So we want, that's exactly what we want. 
when it's when the B4 is 1, our first category item, we simply want that height, in this case the width, to be 0. Great, so that's it. That is for the top. We'll call this top menu item adjust. Let's call this spacer. I don't know really what else to call it. And this would be the bottom. So this is simply the bottom, the bottom menu item spacer. Bottom menu item spacer. All right, so now that we have that, and what we want to do here is what about for the bottom? Now the bottom is the height because we've turned it around. So it's going to be relatively the same, but this time what I want to know is the height all the way to the height. We're simply we're going to take the entire height from all the way from 4 to 30, and then we're going to make a subtraction. So basically, in this case, I want to know all the way from 4, which is the minimum, all the way to 30, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract something. Now, if it's on 1, what am I subtracting? Well, I'm subtracting nothing, right? If it's the first option, I want the full height. So we need to make sure that if it's 1, we're subtracting nothing. If it's 2, we're going to subtract basically two rows, right? The row of this one. I want it the height of this. We're subtracting just this. So we're basically making a subtraction. So we're going to take that full height of all of the rows and we're making a subtraction here. And what are we going to subtract? We're going to subtract the height of, again, we're that same height that we're using. And we're going to multiply that times, again, B4 minus 1. So let's say, again, we're on the first one, right? 1 minus 1 is 0. We're multiplying that times the height, and that would be 0, right? So for the first one, 0. So all we're, we're not subtracting anything. However, if it's the second item, 2 minus 1 is 1. So again, 1 times the height, it would be 1. We're subtracting only the full width of two rows. So that way, when they select the second one, we're simply subtracting the height of these two rows. We're subtracting the height, and that's how we get this automated height. OK, also what we want to do is we want to set the top, right? I want to make sure the top is based on the A4. Again, the top position is going to be what? That's we've we've already notated the width of this, right? We want to know what the height of this. But what about where is it? How far is it placed up? How far is it placed down? Right. I want to know exactly where it's placed down. I want to make sure that the top is exactly where it's supposed to be. So if I move this down here a little bit here and then what we do is we just click here. I want to make sure that it automatically is adjusted here so we want to make sure that that happens there okay so how do we do that well that's simply what we need to do is oh and let me move it over a little bit to the left here cover that gap there okay so basically all we need to do is just get I want to put that top position I want to know how far above and we do that with that single line of code here so the top position of this menu button here is basically it's a we're using a and four why are we using a and four basically that's just the height the top in this case Let's go start from here. B4. Let's say B4 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So 2 plus 4 is 6. So it's going to be A6. The top is going to be A6 when we have that. A6, right? Notice that. So that means when we have 2, right? A6 is the top. Notice here, A6 is the top. So all I want to do is extract 6, or in this case, 8, or in this case, 10 or in this case, 11. So all we're doing is getting the top. I want that top. In this case, the top would be 12, okay? So we want that top position. I need to know how high to place it. Okay, so that's all we do inside that. I know it's a little bit confusing, but go through the code. Then all I want to do is I want to then loop through all the category numbers. And why do we want to do that? Well, we want to loop through all the category numbers because I need to then color these, right? I want to give these a specific color based on that, right? I need to know this one needs to be colored light green. The rest need to be colored dark green. So basically, if it's category, notice that this is menu item one. So if this selected menu is one, I want to color this light green and I want to color the rest dark green. And I want to add this green dark green icon. And I also want to put the rest as white icons. All right? Okay, so that's really, really important. So we're going to do that. Let's line these up and bring them over a little bit so they're nice and lined up. Okay, so that's how we're going to do that. So let's go inside and see how we do that. So we want to loop through all the category numbers, one through 10. So I want to determine what is the category number. The menu number equals the menu number. If the category number equals the menu number, what would that be? That means the menu number, that means it's green. We want to call it that green. If it's a category number here equals the menu number. Okay, The menu number we've already defined. The category number is going to be based on here, the category number here as we loop through. So then in other words, 1 through 10, as we loop through, I want to know 
if it's selected, we want to color it light green, we want to color it. So in this case, I'm going to give it the fill for color, the object theme color of accent five. How do we know that? Well, all we need to do is run a, color, run a macro, record a macro. If I want to know what we're doing, all I need to do is just take a basic shape. If I want to know what color, if I want to find out what color, all I need to do is just take a sh shape here, record a macro, click OK, and whatever color that I want to fill it, I just take a look at that. And for example, is this fill or this fill or whatever in this case we're using I believe this fill color here so how do we know that well whatever it is not that fill color this fill color this this here with this one this is the one I want so if that's the one I want how do we know that well let's take a look at the last one although we selected a bunch of them let's take a look inside the module here looking for the last one here is accent five that's the one we assigned not the first one so that's how we also know the brightness is six point uh zero 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 so if we know that, just using that is all we need to do to get that information. And we can place that directly inside that. So that's how we're going to get that. So that's how we got accent color five, simply just running the macro to knowing which one. Okay, and then we're gonna set the brightness, right? So we wanna set the brightness. So we set those two things. And next up we wanna do, okay, so that's it. But also what I want to do is I want to fill the text frame, right? There's a few other things going on. Also notice that instead of the text becoming instead of the text white it becomes that green color so we want to also do that so that font the text frame the font of that text frame that same shape paper we're going to give it this accent color which is basically that green we're also going to give that brightness five so basically i just ran a macro so we're going to change the font color to green that's basically all this changing the font color to green we're changing the background to light green and also when we select them notice that that icon goes to green and the white is hidden the green one is displayed the white one is hidden so we need to do that as well given them specific names category icon green we want to show that one category icon white we want to hide that one and that's what we're going to do in the macro here category icon white we're going to make that visible equals mso false hide the white icon and we're going to show the green white icon show green icon so that's all we're going to be doing with that just simply and basically else all the others remember we're looping through then only for the selected one we're going to do this all the others we're going to do this we're going to do just the opposite we're going to give it a specific dark green color for the backness and the brightness uh, minus 0 0.5 and also for the text font fill color i want to give it the background right i want to give it that white background that's the theme color background one that is the white font so that's all we're doing and again with the icons we are going to show the white icon and we are going to hide the green one in this case basically we're going to do just the opposite we're showing white icon and then we're hiding the green hiding green icon so that's all we're doing once we loop through that okay so now that sets up our menu everything we did just simply sets up our menu but what we haven't done yet is if we have not built out these specific shapes for our types right so how do we do that well that's coming up next so again all we're going to do again is going to place inside k3 run an advanced filter and get those results that's what we're going to do right now so here loading those product types products k3 is equal to what how do we know what it is how do we know where what what to put how do we know it's seafood to put in here well if we know that seafood is the third option down here we also know that we've selected menu three then we know simply it is b and six plus or in this case seven plus three seven we know it's seven plus three is going to see it's the fourth or fifth we know that so that's all we need to do inside vba admin b and seven plus whatever's in b4 i guess we've already named that range so we could use that so we've already named it here menu number we can actually change that up because it's a variable now so we don't need to use b4 anymore seven plus the menu number is going to be the value that's going to set that criteria inside the product sheet once we have that we can focus on the products we can determine the last row last row of the products if the last row is less than three we can exit out we're going to run an advanced filter inside our products that advanced filter is going to be based on all of the products here so we're going to base it here we can we could do it just theoretically a2 all the way through i although we just need to go through a few of them c and d is sufficient for us and then what we're going to do is you're going to use the criteria that criteria is going to be located right here 
K2 through K3, and we want those results, those unique results coming in the type. So that's just what our advanced filter is going to do. I'm going to drop this down so we can then see it here, and then we'll be able to walk through as we do. I'm going to bring this up now, and then we can go through it. Okay, so that advanced filter is C2D. Again, we're only focused on category and type, so that is sufficient for our advanced filter. That criteria is going to come from K2 to K3, and the results are going to go into L2 through L2, okay? L2, that's it. All those results are going to come. That's it. All we need, then what I need to do is determine the last row of the results. Once I know the last row, assuming that we do have results, we can loop through those. So that's just what we're going to do in the next lines of code. The last results row is going to be based on L, okay? Assuming the last result, if the last result is less than three, then exit the sub. Assuming that it's not, I want to set a constant top position, right? I need that initial top position right here, and I want also the initial left position. So that's going to change as we go through. So it's going to be based on cell D3. It's going to, D3 is our cell here, and then we're going to move it over a little bit to the right because I don't want it exactly in the top once we have there. But the top position is simply the top plus one. The left position is going to be D1. Any column, will, any row will be fine. D1, the left position of D, plus 20, right? We don't want it right on the left, right? It would be way too far over to the left. We need to move it over more to the right, so that's why we add the plus 20. So that's going to set initial left position. And up here, it's going to set the initial top position. This will set initial. And of course, that's going to change as we build them out, at least the top, initial, top position position okay so we've got that now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a loop as we mentioned we want to loop through those results so the results row three to the last results row first thing what I want to do is take this sample shape and I want to duplicate it so that's it that's all we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate that sample shape here and we give it a specific name the category type and the result row minus two right category one two and three so on and so forth result row the first one's gonna be three the first result row here is gonna be three so I want to loop through that. So we're going to assign it category one, category two, category three. So as we move through, okay, so we're going to set that top position to be the initial top position, that left position, which won't change to the left position. Then we're going to assign it a text. What, what shape do we want? Once we've signed that shape, right, this category, I want to put the text. I want to take that text, category type one. Again, we've assigned it that name here. After duplicating it, we've given it that name here. Now, with that specific shape, we're working on with that shape. All this is we're working on that shape that we just created. So we're going to give it that text. That text is going to be based on L and the result row. That's the type name. That's the text. Also, I want to assign a macro to it. That macro we're going to come up in just a bit. That macro is called on action type select. Also, now what I've done, I want to increase the top position. So I want to increase the top position, the height of this, plus the top. That way, if we, let's say we have a lot of categories and we decrease the height of this sample, right, and we click see if we get, notice that there's, they're smaller. So it's very, very easy to make things smaller. It's all based on the original one. So it's really, really handy, right? So if we make it a little bit bigger, so we can, if we control the sample, it controls everything else, which is really handy. So the top position is going to be based on the height of this plus five. So that way they're all going to have equal spacing top position plus five that's it now we've created categories that's all we have to do okay so the next macro is the macro when we select the type right that's the macro that's just been assigned here when i assign that macro what do i want to do well i want to run in another advanced filter it's going to be based on muscles in this case i want to take that muscles and i'm going to put that into our criteria here then what i want to do is i want to run an advanced filter based on this criteria and i want that particular criteria to come through results here and i want those results to come all the way through here let's shrink that up we don't need that so big so then again i want those results and then with these results i want to build out all of those product pictures so that's what we're going to do right now inside this macro here called type select and the first thing we want to do in this macro just like the others any products that are existing i need to clear out when i change the category i need to clear them all out right so if i've got a lot of products here like cheese and i want to clear it out so the first thing we do is clear out all the existing so how do we do that well each one has the name of product so any shape with the name of product 
we're gonna delete that. So that's what we're gonna do right here. So for each, we're focused on for each product shape in POS this time, we're calling out the sheet and the shapes in string. If it, the name of that particular shape contains the word product or the text product is greater than zero, then delete it. So this will delete all of the products. Okay, now we're focusing primarily on the products sheet. Again, we're gonna determine the last row if it's less than three eggs of the sub, just like we did above. And determine the type number. This time I want the type number. Again, we could use a few different things. I could use the string category. There's a few different things. So the type number is gonna be based on, right? In other words, the type number is going to be based on this uh, category type one, category type two. So when they select something, I wanna know, we could use the text inside. I could also use the text inside. That would be another way to do it, probably easier. But if I extract that number, I also know where it's located, right? If I extract one from the product type, I know it's gonna be one here. If I extract two, I know which one to do. So that's what we're gonna do. I think I'll change that to name, it's a little bit easier. So, and what I want to do is I wanna put that directly in, I wanna put that directly inside M3 because that is going to be our criteria. So how do we do that? So here, right here, M3 is gonna be equal to POS application caller. Here's the text here, that's what we have. So we've got, we know the number we've gotten, the last row, type number we're placing, we know which one they've typed. Here, we're gonna replace category type plus two. What is the purpose of this? Well, again, the application caller is the name of the shape, type one, type two, type three. I'm gonna taking out the category type, that's gonna leave me with just the number. So if it's the first one they've selected, if I add two, that's gonna give me three. I know the row that they've selected. That's gonna come in handy, okay, because I know the number. M3, again, is going to take on our text. So I've done that here. POS, shapes, application caller, text frame, text range two. What is the text inside that shape? Whatever that text is inside the shape, I wanna place directly in M3, that is our criteria. We're gonna then run our advanced filter here using all the data this time, all the way from A2 through I. We're gonna run that advanced filter. Our criteria is gonna be M2 through M3 this time. We're gonna have those results come all the way from to W2 through AE. Those results, W2 all the way through AE and down. So I wanna know, in this case, all those cheese. Then what I need to do is I need to determine the last row. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create shapes based on all the items and based on the pictures located here. So that's just what we have inside the code here. So for example, inside here, let's go back into the code here. We're gonna do that now. The last row, we've determined that, we've run our advanced filter. We get in the last results row, assuming that we do have results, we can then continue on. So if the last row is less than three, then exit the sub, just to double check to make sure that we have results. We're gonna set the product row as three, that initial product row. I wanna know that product row. As we loop through them, we need to create those. Product rows three here, and we're gonna go through them. So we've got the initial product rows three. We want the product column as six. How do, excuse me, product row, sorry, not here. Let me focus on that. Product row is row three right here. This is our product row. Yeah, sorry, that's better. Product row three, because that is the first row that I wanna place those products in. Notice three, notice they're all exactly on row three. The product column is here, column six column seven, column eight, and column nine. So we're gonna go from three, then we're gonna go to eight, then we're gonna go to 13, then we're gonna go to 18, right? So we're gonna skip five each time. So notice what I wanna do is I'm gonna fill up. So first we're gonna go from left to right. So with the product columns are gonna go from six to seven to eight to nine. Then once it gets to nine, it's gonna drop it down. We're gonna, it's gonna go back to six, and it's gonna go again, but the but the row is gonna go from three to eight. So basically we're placing them on a grid. And that's what we're gonna do here. So we wanna set that initial product row equal to three and set that initial product column to six. Okay, I also wanna know the product folder. Where are those pictures located? Of course, that's gonna be in here in C4. I wanna make sure that that's accurate so we can get, extract those pictures out of it. And then we're ready to run a loop. This is the, where we come to three. Results row from our products, three to the last results row. I wanna get that picture file, that entire path is gonna be based on the product folder, plus the backslash, plus the products range AE and the results row. That's right here. AE, here's our results. We're looping through the results, so our first result. AE and the results row, that's the name of that, just the picture name. When we combine this name with a folder, we get the full file path of the picture. So we can do that inside this string variable here. That is the full file path of the picture. So we have that. Now we're gonna check accuracy, check correct file path, okay? We're gonna check if it's nothing, then the picture file equals nothing. So we can't insert if it's nothing. Also, 
the shapes product sample group duplicate name now what, what I want to do is I'm ready to duplicate so what I want to do here is I want to create a bunch of these so how do we do that well we have a group here this is called the product sample group inside that group we have two shapes one shape is called product picture the other shape is called product text so I want to basically duplicate this shape here so product sample group duplicate inside the code that's just what we're going to do right here product sample duplicate and I want to give it a specific name that name is going to be product and the result row so it's going to be three right we're not starting at one here our first one's going to be three why is that important because when I select this I want to go straight to row three because I have all the information here so we're starting at row three because our our first one's going to be on row three that's why we want to make sure that our first one's here on row three it's just easier we don't need to add two so we've got that so what I want to do is first thing I want to rename that shape to the product and remember then what I want to do is inside with the inside picture product picture three I want to rename it and give it a specific number and I want to do the same thing here product text here three again take a look at these names product text txt seven characters take a look at this one product picture seven characters and then the number that's very very important because if I want to extract that number I need to take out the first seven characters regardless that means if they click here or they click here we know which product they have so keep that in mind naming them very very specific so first thing what we're going to do is with the products this is this new group that we I want to place it based on this the left position is going to be the POS again I have to call out the sheet because we are inside the shapes product row product column left product row product column the top so this sets the left position set left position it's very easy left position because we base it on cells when you base it on cells as much as you set top position okay so you set the left set now what I want to make sure I want to make sure the picture file is not empty if it's empty remember it could be empty because we've determined it here if it's if the VB directory is nothing if the picture file is not empty then we're going to insert it but remember this picture file is already part of a group right so we need to call out the group first product and the number group items then the group item that specific item inside this group is called the product picture three so we do just that here so first thing it says with the group items product picture first thing I'm going to rename it I'm going to rename it product pick and the result row so we're giving it all we're doing is adding that row number onto the name so I can extract it and I'm going to do the same thing inside the group items the text we're going to do the same thing we're calling this product text and the result row this sets the names for those two shapes right remember we're going from here we're going from the name product picture we're going to the name now it's going to be called product pick three okay so we're just resetting that name and it's very very important so when they select that we know so once we have that what I want to do then if the picture then group items product picture fill that's important fill right assuming that we have a picture file filling that product picture shape with the user picture the picture file user picture we're going to take that shape and we're going to fill it with a picture using this picture file variable here okay once we have that what we can do is then we can then also want to fill the text so now we've got the picture so the last thing left is this text right here I need to fill it in so how do we do that that's easy we do that right here product text the result row text frame text range text frame where is it going to come from it's going to come from products column x and the result row so I'm going to take whatever is located inside column x and our result right here and I'm going to assign it that name as we loop through it, it is this name that gets put inside this text right here okay so once we have that we've placed it in we've placed that name then again what we're going to do is we need to update now that we've placed our first one I need to know is the product column nine remember we're going to start at six seven eight and nine once it gets to nine what do I need to do I need to reset the product column down to six and I need to increase the rows by five whatever the current row is by, by five so we need to do that only if it's nine so if the product column is nine reset the product column to six and then add the row add five to whatever product rows otherwise if it's not nine all we need to do is keep move it over one column to the right product column equals product column press increment the column increment product column okay and this would be a new row so new product 
row. Okay, so we've got that there. We understand that's how we exactly place them. So that's, and then of course, we're gonna assign a macro to that, to that entire group, that entire group, right? I wanna assign a macro, not a group item. Once I assign a macro to this entire group, what it does is it assigns a macro individually. How do we do that? If we assign the macro and we see there's nothing assigned to this group, right? However, if we click on any individual item inside the group, right click assign a macro we see that the order item selected there so within vba all or even within now all we need to do is assign the macro to the group then automatically it will assign the macro to the individual items inside that group so all we need to do here is simply assign the macro to the group as well assign macro to the group good glad we got that okay so that's it that's all we have to do that's everything so now these macros have built it out and for the next macro all we're going to do is show you how we build out these the rest of it okay so that's how we create the main menu the dynamic types and all the products inside here great i'm glad i got to show that part to you now that we've built out the basic screen let's go over the rest of the screen and see how we can get these items added a few different ways We've got a SKU number. When we enter a SKU number, it's going to automatically basically add that item to the list. Or if that item's already included in the list, it's going to just add the quantity. So, for example, if I add that skim mill, it's going to add one down here. But if I click it one more time, it's going to increase that number to two. And that's what we want. We want to increase the number as we click there. So we click more than once. And that's exactly what we want. If we want to delete an item, we can just simply select it and delete the item. So we've got the quantity. If we set the quantity automatically, then as soon as we add an item, it is going to add based on that item quantity. So it'll be adding it based on whatever item quantity we set. So if we preset the quantity and then enter the item, it is going to enter that item quantity there. So we can see that. We've got a total. If we pay, enter a payment, that change is going to be automatically. We've got a print button that we're going to set up and we've got the next button okay next simply does that it enters the orders and clears it out and goes to the next item so we can start entering more items very very quickly very very simply all right so how do we make that happen okay so let's focus on the first one which is going to be the selection and once we show you that then i'm going to show you how we can enter an item through our telephones through our mobile phones through a great app okay so let's get into that macro now that's the macro we're going to focus on we're going to take our focus from the sheet macros into the order macros we can delete this sample module now we don't need that and then we're going to focus on so the first one we want to do is the add item okay or the item select right the item select is going to be the one we want to do but it is the add item that we're going to do so the item select is the macro that's been assigned to that button once we add the information into k3 automatically that information is going to be it. so for example basically all we need to do really is enter so for example if i enter a upc i'm going to copy this one from the first item i'm going to go into pdf if i just simply enter that in here enter it's going to automatically add that item so basically it is the change event focused on k3 when we make a change to that k3 if we enter an incorrect number it's going to let us know that it's incorrect so changing the event so all we need to do if i want to enter this item what I need to do is determine the UPC of this item and get that item entered into K3. So that's what we want to do with the macro that's been assigned. Again, that macro, again, if we look at that, we see it's the order item select. That's the one we're going to focus on here. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to determine the result row. Now, that result row is coming from our results right here. Remember, we've got results based on that three items here three items in here. So our result row is going to be three, four, or five, right? Products are here, three, four, or five. So I want to extract that. Once I know the result row, whether it's three, four, or five, then I know the name because that name is based on column X. So if I take that name in the result row and I place, for example, if I take that UPC, which is located in W, I take that UPC located in column W and I in that row and I place that directly inside K3, the change event that I'll show you running, it's going to run that macro. So that's just what we do inside this code here. So what we do is we determine the result row. That result row is based on removing seven characters, the first seven characters. Product pick. Notice the first seven characters, we're using the same thing again. It's going to leave us the, the number, right? So however many digits the number is. And the same thing, if they click on this, the text, the same thing. Also the first seven characters. Notice they have different characters, but they're both based on. So if I remove the first seven characters, regardless of whatever they click on, it will left the number remaining. It's that row number that I want to extract so I can extract that UPC code. And that's what we do inside that macro. So inside that macro we do is to get that all we need to do is use application caller it is 
application caller. So that is the name of that. Then we have, I'm going to take the left, using the left of the application caller, I want to know those seven first seven characters. And I want to use the replace. So again, we're replacing those first seven characters, replacing them with nothing. If we replace those with nothing, it'll leave us exactly with that number. It is that number that we're going to put into this variable, which is a whole number, result row. Okay. Now, we want to make sure, just in case, that it is numeric. So if is numeric equals false and exit the sub, right? Then there's some issue we need to go. Assuming that it is a number, what I want to do is inside K3, I want to take whatever is in W, that is our, of course, our UPC located inside the products here, W, taking that UPC and placing it inside K3. The change event will then take over from that point on. So that's all we need to do, just place it inside K3, that UPC. If we take a look inside our or our POS here, we do have a change event, worksheet change event. That means when something happens, something, some cell is changed, then this will be triggered. Only when a change is made to K3 and only when K3 does not equal empty. When those two conditions happen, I want to do something. I want to run the macro called order item add, order item add. And that is this macro right here called order item add. That's the one I want to go over with you right now. And the first thing that I want to do is delete any of the selected picture. If I take a look at this, this picture we've called selected product picture. So whatever that is, I want to delete it. So if I select this picture, it is that project. So it is this picture that I want to replace. So to do that, we just simply delete selected product picture. If for some reason it doesn't exist, it would create an error. So therefore, we've wrapped it on on air, resume next, and on air, go to zero. So that's going to delete that. It's going to delete selected picture. It's kind of self-explanatory. So next, again, I want to determine, I want to pull the picture up. What I want to do is I want to extract the picture from the folder. And I want to do that. So we, of course, we need to define that picture folder, again, located in admin. C3. And I also want to know the product UPC that's located in K3 because we just placed it there. And what I want to do now is I want to look for that product. I want to determine the product, right? So I've got products here. It's my product list here, my original data. And I've got a named range called product UPC. If we go into the formulas, name manager, product UBC. This is a dynamic named range. It's going to be based on all of the product UBCs. So what I want to do is I want to, inside this list, I want to look for it. I want to find the one we just selected. If I, it's found, I want to know what row it's on. If I know what row it's on, then I can enter all the information. I can enter the name, I can enter the price, and I can extract the picture. So getting that row is essential. To do that, we're going to set a range. So we're going to set that found product range to be equal to the products, product sheet, the range product UBC. This is the dynamic named range that we've created using the offset formula. We're going to look for something. We're going to look for the product UBC. We're going to look it in the values and whole. Okay, if it's been found, if the if found, then it'll be if not product found is nothing. But what if it's not found? If it's not found, it's going to be if product found is nothing. That means it's not found. Let's put the note there to make sure not found. If it's not found, then we need to let the user know. Please enter a correct product UPC. What I want to do is I want to clear the contents of K3. Now, notice that K3 is a merged cell. Therefore, it is K3 through K4. So we need to clear out both. Anytime we have a merged cell, we're going to clear out both cells, K3 through K4. We're going to clear that out and give the user another chance to enter the correct one. So we can do that right here inside the code. K3, K3. And then what I want to do is just K3 select. I want to select that cell that's going to be used. So then we're going to exit the sub. Nothing else we can do further. This way they can enter. We've selected the cell. They can enter a brand new K3. But what if they have? What if it is correct? In that case, we can move on. The first thing I want to do is turn off screen updating. I'm going to make that false, and that's going to help things move a little bit faster and clearer, and that less flashes in the screen. I want to determine the product row is going to be the product. Remember, we need to get that product row so we can extract the name, we can extract the price, and we can extract the picture. So we do that with based on the found product. This is the range that found it, right? Once it's found, we can do found product range. Now, found product has been defined as a range here. Once we define it as a range, we can then get extract the row and other things from it once it's been found. Okay, so assuming that we do have the product row, we can then move on. So the last item row, I want to know the last item row based on this, right? So it's going to be based on column R. So I'm going to be based on column R. Now, what's in column R? If we take a look over here, we've got some more information. I've got the UPC and the database row. So these are 
So as we add items, this is going to grow. So this here is the UPC of the item. All I have here is I have the, the name, the quantity, the price, and the total. But I want to put in the UPC, and I'll put it in column R. R is going to tell us the last row, right? If the last row, of course, is less than 11, there's no items. But if there is last row, and why is that important? It's important because if I need to know whether we are going to be adding a new row here or whether we found the UPC. I'm going to, I'm going to look for the current. Is the current UPC, is it in there? If it's there, if it's found already, if this item's already been added, all we need to do is increase the quantity. If it's not found, I'm going to add a new row. So we do that just in here. So we're going to set that last item. If the last item row is 11, they go to no items. There's no items. Then again, I want to look for that product UPC. But this time, I'm going to look for it based on all the way from R11 through R in the last row. So we're going to set that right found item between R11 and R in the last item row. We're going to find the UPC based on the values and hold. If not found is nothing, this is found. If it is found, then all we need to do is increase the quantity of the row. Locate the row and increase the quantity in column N. So that's what we do here. Dot range N and the found item row dot value equals whatever is currently there plus whatever has been added in the quantity, plus whatever is located in K6. Maybe we're adding two, one, or two, or something like that. Also, by the way, these are just simply borders that I've put around there. There's a rounded corner, so that's just to make give it a nice look. So that's all I've done there. So basically, whatever quantity has been in here, we're simply going to add it. So if, if it's already, so that way, if they put in three here, and it's already been found, I'm just going to increase this. Notice it increase to five. If I put another two in here, and I select the same item, it's going to increase to seven. But if it's not found, it's going to add it below. So that's just what we do. We increase the quantity there. Else it's not found. If it's not found, it's a little bit more complicated, right? Because I've got to put it down at the first available row. But I've also got subtotals here that I need to clear out. And I've got these that I need because I need that to move it down. So, for example, if it is a new row and is not found, let's say we have this. Then what I need to do is I need to increase that row. I need to bring down these subtotals, the payments and the charge. And I need to bring down these two footer groups, which is made up of a footer message and it's made up of a barcode order ID. I'm going to go over that with you in just a moment. So we need to bring that down. So first of all, the item row is going to be equal to the last item row plus one, right? We know the last item row is here. So that means the what I want to do is I want to put that new item right here located in column M. I want to determine that row. It's going to be this row here. So after I determine that row, then what I want to do is I want to add the information. I want to clear the previous total range. Range. Notice these are the total range. So basically what I'm going to do all the way from O through P and then all the way down and however far, just going to delete that. Deleting that takes care of that. So once it's deleted, right, and you can do that here. So O through P and the item row plus one. Remember, this is our item row here. So through all the way down here, we're just going to clear the contents of that. P through clear the contents, clear previous total range. Okay. Now what we're going to do is M in the product row, M is going to be equal to B in the product name. Product row is where B in the product name. If we look in the products and we look in column B, we're going to find that item name. So whatever is in B in the product row, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it directly inside column M here. So that item name is going to go there. So once that is found in the next item, what I want to do, oh, excuse me, O, O through P, we've done that, M is correct, M in the B product name, quantity is next, that's correct. N is going to take on the quantity, right? I have, what's the quantity? The quantity is going to be based whatever is located inside K6. So inside column N, it's going to take on whatever's in K6. So N equals K6. Now what about the price? That's going to come directly from our product table located in column H, and it's going to go into column O. That price is going to go here. So it's coming directly from our products right here in column H. That is where the price is coming from. So bringing it over. Okay, next up, what I want to do is I want to set the formula, right? We, we have different formulas. I want to make sure that this formula here is basically N13 times O13, or N and the current row times O in the current row. So we just do that right here. P is simply equal to equals N, we're adding a formula now, and the item row times O in the item row. This is going to set the formula. It's going to multiply the quantity times the price. And then lastly, I want to put that product UPC, which is a little bit off the screen. Nobody would see it, right? We can change it. We can bring it all over here. That's more for database purposes. I'm going to put that UPC, whatever's look in column R. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so that's it. That's all we have there. But now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we put in the product name inside the product name text. We've also got a text here. If we take a look at this, 
This shape is called product name text. I want to know what the current item that we just added is. So I want to take this text and I want to take this picture and I want to place it here so we can clearly see what product item just got added. So it's very easy. So this is simply a text box. This text box is called product name text. This is simply called the select product picture. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take this text box and I want to assign a text to it, whatever has been in here or necessarily whatever is located here. I'm going to assign that to it. So we do it just with that single line of code. Shapes, product name text, the text field text range equals the products B, column B is the name, and the product row. It's going to set that product name. Now we want to add that picture. I want to make sure that I, there is a picture. There is a at least a picture name so i want to make sure that i column is not empty if it does contain a picture i also want to make sure that we have of course a valid product picture folder located we've already put that into a variable i believe and so what we want to do is the picture file we have product folder was one of the things we did right up here product folder we've already assigned that so now we just need to combine the picture file is simply equal to the product folder plus the backslash plus whatever is located in i and that is the picture file path okay we're going to put that down here picture file path we do need to check to make sure it's accurate just like we did before so we do that if the directory of the picture file vb directory does not equal empty then we know it's correct now we're going to simply insert a picture picture the file name and we're going to set a specific name for that picture and then we're going to work directly with that picture so with shapes that new picture we added i want to lock the aspect ratio i want to make sure we do that so it doesn't get contorted and i want to check is the height which is bigger the height or the width right i want to know because i want to set the maximum if the height's bigger i want to set the maximum height but if the width is bigger i want to set the maximum width so we can do that determining which one is more because we don't know if it's the landscape or horizontal so we'd have to take a look at that and determine that so we can do that with if the height is greater than the width then we're going to set the height to 60 else we're going to set the width to 60. now we only need to set either the height or the width because we've locked the aspect ratio the height the if we set the height the width will automatically adjust if we set the width the height will automatically adjust so that's it now all we need to do is set the left position and what i'd like to do is i'd like to set it centered between j and k i want it centered there and i also want to center between rows 8 through 12 so we set it from 8 to 12 i want it centered so we can do that with just two lines of code first thing is the left position i want it centered between j and k columns j and k i want to determine the total width between column j and k if i know that width and then i know the width of the picture then what i want to do is i want to have equal space on the left and the right of the picture so if i know the width if that's say, let's just say for ease let's say the width is 100 right uh, between j and k and let's say the picture width is 50 then i know that i want 25 pixels on the left and i know i want 25 pixels on the right so evens because i've got that much left so all we need to do is take j through k the total width minus the width of the picture and then we divide that by two so once it's divided by two i then simply add what is left to column j and that's going to get us it's centered so we do just that inside a formula so the left position is equal to j8 that's our starting position j column j8 doesn't necessarily matter plus again the width of the two columns minus the width of the picture itself divided by two we're going to do the same thing for the top that's going to be the centered left position centered left position and then we have the centered top position centered vertical position let's see centered now that we have that so basically it's the same thing and this time it's j8 the top so we're focused on row eight it is row eight the top plus what the height of rows eight through twelve the height of that minus the height of the picture and then divided by two that's the centered height so basically that's going to get us our picture that's always going to be sized right it's always going to be centered right exactly where we want it so that's it that's all we have to do with the picture next thing up i want to get prepared for the next item so to do that we need to clear out the upc i want to clear out k3 i want to clear out anything else that might be associated with that item so how do we do that so we do that with k3 to k4 i also want to clear out b6 b6 is if we've selected an item it's going to show up directly in b6 b6 is going to take on that item and that's conditional formatting so i want to clear out when i add an item i want to make sure that b6 get cleared out so i want to make sure that happens so we do that there so once b6 what about k17 through k18 k17 is that if they're paid enough we need to clear out any payments so that it, we can be reset so we're going to clear out the payments 
Once we've done that, I want to make sure if k6 value does not equal 1, then k6 equals 1. Set the default. I want to set this default back to 1 just so we can easier. So because it's usually once we add an item. So if we've added 3 this time and we add an item, I want to set this back to 1. So we can do just that here with that line of code if it's not 1, right? If it doesn't equal 1, we don't need to set it if it's already 1. Then what I want to do is I want to run our macro to set the footer, setting the found item to nothing and the product nothing, and then application screen updating true. So setting the footer, what do we have to do? Well, I want to set this particular shape and I want to set these totals, right? We've placed it, but we, what we did was we, remember, we cleared it out. Now, why do we want this in a separate macro? Why not just write the code that's going to do this? Because setting the total, I want to reset this total. When I delete an item, it needs to be reset. When I add a new item, it needs to be reset. So there's several instances. And also when I load in order, if I forgot to show you this, when I load in order, I want it to also set up as well. So how do I do that? I forgot to show you that. We can search for it. It's, it's, there's a lot of features in this. I forgot them all. But it, trust me, it's always going to be good with you watch, even though there's surprises along the way. So there's several instances where we want to do the same thing, and that's reset the total. So if you want to do something at several instances, then we need to make sure that we're resetting it. We can create a separate macro for it, and that's just what we did here in this macro called order set footer. And that's the one right here called order set footer. So we're going to focus on that right now. So with this macro, again, we're going to focus on the point of sale POS sheet. We're going to determine the last item row based on him. I need to know that last item row because that subtotal, that information has got to show up here. Okay, also keep a note that I do have all of this information here located right here. So if we take a look at this, we've got some subtotal. I've got a subtotal. I've got uh, a tax here. It's going to be basically equal to, I've got a formula here, and I've got a total here. So basically what I want to do is I want to take this here, and I want to bring it directly over to here. And I want to place it directly in here, then just update the formula. So again, let's take a look at that, those formulas, before we get into it. we got the tax. In fact, I, I could probably do it something like this equals tax name right that would probably be better and colon there we go there now it's going to be the tax name it looks the same to you but if we go again if we go into the admin and we change the tax name here it's going to automatically be dynamic based on that so that's what i like a little bit better more of a dynamics tax okay all right so we've got that in there and also what I want to do is I want to have, what is that tax rate? That tax rate is going to be based on something. It's going to be based on some if. I want to know all of the rows where R contains a value all the way from R11 through R60, right? So if R contains a value, right, then what I want to do is it doesn't equal empty. Then P11 times P12, I'm going to sum everything that's located in column P, which is our total, and multiply it times the tax rate. Our subtotal I'll show you in just a bit because that's going to be dynamic. It's got to be based on the starting row 11, but we don't know the last row. So therefore, it's dynamic because we don't want to include the totals. So we'll, after we bring this in, then we can place that total. The total is simply going to be equal to x5 plus x6. So when you bring this over, it'll be brought over to here brought over automatically. Paid amount, of course, that's going to be K17 regardless. It's going to be K amount. And the change is simply going to be what is located in K20. K20 automatically calculates that based on that. So it's going to be simply K17 minus 14. K17 minus 14. So paid amount minus the total here. And the total here, again, let's take a look at this total. Again, we're going to do sum if we're basing it on sum. R61, and we're going to sum the total of P11. Now, what I want to do is I want to add that to what? I want to add that to the tax. So I want to take all those amounts, again, based on only if there's values. And the reason we're using the sum, if not just because remember, we don't want to include this information in the sum. So I can't total everything in here. I can only total those with a value here, right? If we total the entire column, it's not going to be accurate. It's going to include this and this and this. So what we want to do is we only want to sum those that contain the UPC. So that way it'll only sum those values here. I'm going to take that sum and multiply it times the tax rate also, which is here. So we add the tax, the total tax, plus the total subtotal, and we're going to get our total. That's how we do it. And we subtract the payment from it, and we get our change due. So now that you understand this, we do have this in a named range, and I've called that total range. That is the named range we call total range. It's easier to work with inside VBA. So back into the VBA we go. So we determine the last item, right? We want to know the last item of M. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the total. So we need to know, oh, I want to just make sure that I want to clear out all the previous totals. O and the last item plus one, P99. So basically, I'm going to take the last item, which is here, 
plus the first item, the last item, first item available is O plus one, all the way through P, all the way down, clearing everything out, just clearing the contents, making sure there's nothing there before we set those totals. Once we have, we're gonna take that range that I just showed you called total range, and we're gonna copy that range. First thing I wanna do is paste those values inside O in the last item row, plus one, paste those values, and then I wanna paste the formulas in there. And then application cut copy mode equals false. That's gonna remove those dancing ants. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna set the sum. Remember, we did everything but this. The sum is simply P11 minus P in the last row, right? This last row we didn't know, so we need to use VBA to add that in. So we're gonna do just that inside VBA. P in the last item row, this is our total. Let's just call this sub total formula so we have the subtotal form assembly p11 through p in the last item row and then just close the parentheses that is it that's all we have to do okay so great now we've got our footer but now what i want to do is i want to place this footer well where do i want to place this footer i want to place it probably about let's say five rows down from the last item row right so about five rows down. i want to leave enough spacing because our totals here are going to be about five rows so we need to place it below that so we can determine our last item row add additional let's say five rows and then put that in there so that's just what we're going six rows actually six so we're going to focus on that footer group now that footer group again is this two text items one called footer message and one called barcode order id what is this barcode order id well this is simply going to be equal to whatever's in 07 right however we've changed the font of this if we take a look at the font of this item we see that that's called code 128 that is a barcode font if you don't have code 128 i'm going to include it inside the package for you this package is only available through our patreon account so make sure you get on patreon that package of course is going to include all the pictures all the icons and everything you need to make your own so make sure you grab that and that's sign up on patreon i'll make sure to include the link down below for patreon all right so we have our icon we got the code 128 that's going to be make sure if you do get this all you need to do is put it in your fonts folder and it's going to appear here code 128 there's several barcode fonts that you might use so we have a barcode font notice it's linked to whatever is located in L uh, 1007 is basically that if we were to change the font on this you would see that it's just simply another font right so if we say that see it's 1007 it's just a font with a large sign so that's all it is is just the barcode font okay so what i want to do is i want to place this six rows below the last so we're going to focus on just that and i want to make sure the width is set up correctly too so the top is going to be the m plus the last row plus six that's going to set the top the left position is going to be also based on left position i want to set the width to whatever is an m through p that way if we increase this here for some reason then when we set the total let's, let's see if we can reset it here selecting an item there we go so now you notice it's larger right you see so we're resetting the width based on that column and that's just what i wanted to do so resetting that width does it automatically resets the width of it let's delete some of these items so we get everything into view here and so that's how we get that width i want to set the width based on columns m through p m through p determine whatever the column width is of that and make sure we set the width of our shape that's it that's all we do with the footer group next up what i want to do is i want to set if the last item row equals 11 then the last item row equals 10. now i want to set a border now we can use conditional formatting and i've used conditional formatting for these but you notice how these change but what about the border it's a little bit tricky to use conditional formatting with the border but i wanted to show you an alternate look at this this is just the border notice i've used that but when we all add an item, it sets the border up automatically. So it's very, very cool. It's a great way to show it. You can use conditional formatting, but it's a little bit tricky. Why is it tricky? Because there's no values in here. So we can't, sometimes we paste conditional formatting on values, but there's no values here. So we have to set this, this is a little bit more tricky, but I think the, I want to show you the doing another way with the border. Now we've used conditional formatting here and here and here, but the border, as soon as I walk you through the border, then I'll show you the conditional formatting. So let's continue with the code. So the border, which is this simply shape here, all it is is the border called border simple enough right and i've taken this and i'm just going to wrap it around this and play have vba place it exactly where we want it so the top position is going to be m3 the top the left position of course is going to be m3 right that's our first cell we want it directly on m3 but what about the width and the height well the width is simply going to be m through p the width so that way as our width changes so does that border right so that's all we want to do and of course what about the height the height is simply going to be the last row here 
Again, plus 11 there. I think we, what did we add? 10 or 11? The last row plus 10, exactly. The last row plus 10, that's going to set our height. So it's very simple to E. Just a few lines of code can automate the border. Okay. All right. Next up, what I want to do is I want to clear the selected row in B6, right? When I add an item, I want to clear that selected row. I think we did that already, didn't we? Inside here, we don't. We have it up here. Let's see. No, no, not in this macro. That was the other macro. Okay, so clearing this select row. And then I want to select K3. That's very important because we have to be ready to add another item. So as soon as we add an item, I want to make sure that we're not selected anything else, that we're ready to add another item inside K3. That's super important. Okay, that's it. That's all we have to do to set our footer. Okay, so what about this conditional formatting? Well, let's take a look at here. I've just added a basic dotted line here. We've added a few different rules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that we'll go into home conditional formatting we're going to manage those rules and take a look at some of the rules that i've set just four different rules the first thing that what i want to do is notice the total row has double lines above and below it so we're going to set that up o11 that means o in any row any row starting at row 11 if it equals the text total plus the colon then what i want to do is i want to simply bold it and i want to add a border above and below it above and below so that way wherever row is total is going to have that okay that's one rule what about the subtotal i want for the subtotal i want simply a row above it the border above it so how do we do that we're going to edit it any row remember notice that there's no dollar sign before 11 that means any row starting in row 11 if it equals subtotal in the colon then i want to simply add the border above it and i want to make sure that we bolt the font all right so that's it for those two now what else is there now this one if m1 if we add a row and the purpose of this m1 we, let's edit that again m1 this the format right is going to be just simply a white fill white fill and we're going to apply that to m11 through applying that to m11 through p41 but it starts at m1 and remember there's no absolute row so what do we mean by that well let's take a look at that every row the last row that contains a value i want to go down in this case 11 different rows and if those i want to color white also right so basically 10 different rows beyond that i want to color white so that's how we get that's where we start at one because we're going all the way beyond it so basically it's going to color that so as soon as i add text here notice it's going to increase that white so that's what that last one simply does okay let's continue on all right so we've just covered how we set that footer next up we're going to focus on delete but before i cover that i really want to get to the really cool part about image so we know that if we enter the proper skew here right if we it's automatically going to be entered so i've got some products here products that i've done so if we enter that let's go back to products here if we enter the product skew we know that it's automatically getting into that so if i know that and i enter that product skew right here so what if we can use our own telephone to scan in a barcode just with the camera and that's what i was showing you at the beginning of this video and that's what we're going to go to now now there's a really fantastic app that i've discovered and i also talk with the owner and a really amazing app that is called barcode to pc that's what i was mentioning before and it's right here barcode to pc and it's really it says turn your smartphone into a professional scanner very cool and you see it's using excel in the sample and i saw it and i'm like wow 2d barcode this is great so it works really well so you want to do two things you want to download this on your phone and you also it's got real-time keystrokes it does a lot more than just that you can save a file you can use key qr codes you can create different scenarios you can create a whole map out process so in other words you can customize the barcode tab number enter so when you scan it you can do all the what do you want to happen when you scan it all right so let's take a look so i've got that application right here barcode to pc basically what you want to do is you want to connect your smartphone with this okay so we'll go over it. i'll create a screenshot of my smartphone so we'll be able to see it so basically what you can do here is you can pair the app with the qr code or you can add simply connect your phone with it based on the same wi-fi so let's take a look inside my phone here and we'll see how this can work okay so once we see here's my telephone here and we see i've created this test and we'll take a look inside the scanner and we'll see we can do QR code pairing. So let's say we want to pair our desktop. We want to make sure that they're on the same Wi-Fi. So when we do QR code pairing, if I want to pair it, all I would do is click here, pair the app with the QR code, click on the QR code, and then just shine it up here on my screen. And when it comes up, it'll come up just automatically and take a look. All right, so now it's paired up. 
perfect. All right, so it's paired up, we're good to go with that. And all we want to do now is we see that it's paired up, your desktop's paired up, notice it's green, we're good to go. We can close this out, and so we can add additional servers, affine, so we're good to go on that. So now all we need to do is just use the camera tool, right? So once they're paired up, anything we do in here, we can also create different scenarios. If we take a look in this edit, right? We can export as a CFV. We have some options here. We can delete that. We can add additional features. Let's take a look at some of the features here that we have on this. We can open a barcode to PC server automatically after you log in the computer, enable tray icon, automatically open URL. So what we can do is we can drag all these things in here. All these things, when we scan the barcode, what happens? In this case, I wanna do the barcode and then click enter. But we can set up all these custom events to happen when we scan the barcode. The free version I think handles, handles about a maximum of two, but if if you want to, it's a great, it's really worthwhile. You can add timestamps. So simply a scan of your phone can automate all of these things. We can append, we can put the scans into a CSV. Uh, we can enable quotes, lots of different things, enable events, others. So that's all we have to do. So for mine, I just have a barcode and enter. That's all we need to run that. So when I do that here, that's all we need. So when I open up the test, these are all the scans that I've done in previously here. We're good to go with that. And so all I need to do is just simply, let's close this out, simply open the application if it's on, as long as they're paired up, just make sure that I'm selected. And now with my phone back on, right, all I need to do is I'll pull up some products here that I've got handy on my desk, some ketchup and things like that. So I'll just open the camera here and then we have the options of single scan or multiple scan, which is really, really handy. So we'll take a look at that. We'll do multiple scan and we can set a scan so we can set a name. So we'll just do test name and click OK. That's going to be OK. And then all we need to do is just scan it in. So here's we've got a barcode here and we just scan that in like that. And that even upside down, it works. Notice the ketchup. And here's the can. That's there. We got that one there. That one goes in there. And then here's another one. Let's pull this one up here. And we got there. We go. So you see how quick and easy that works. Really, really amazing. Again, that's a barcode to PC. If you use the code Excel for freelancers, I'll put that in the link below. You'll get 10% off. So I've worked that out. So go ahead and take a look at that. I think it's really cool. So many great uses for that. All right, so now that we've seen how to enter them through the scanner, through the camera, through the phone, how do we delete a row? Simply clicking on it, we gotta do a few things, right? I wanna make sure when we delete a row, I wanna make sure that one, if we, if it, there's, if it's already been added inside this order items, I wanna make sure that we delete the row inside this database here, if it's been added. And I also wanna make sure that we move everything up. And I also wanna make sure that if it's been added, for example, if if I delete 15, I want to make sure that this one goes to 14. Notice the database row had to move up. So we need to make sure that we need to do a few things when we're deleting a row. So let's go over that macro right now. Inside this macro we go, it's called the order item delete. Now what I want to do in order to delete this, I want this icon to appear on the row that we know. And what is this icon called? This is called delete item button. I only want this icon to show up when we select it. If we select anything else, I don't want it here. So how do we do that? Well, that's based on selection change before we run that macro. If we take a look inside our POS and we take a look down to worksheet selection change. Here, if the shapes delete item is visible, if for any reason it's visible, hide it. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do, if we make any selections, we're gonna hide it. However, if the user makes a selection between M11 and P999 and M of that same row does not is not empty or contains a value, then I want to show it. Then first thing I want to do is inside B6, I want to place that target row. That's going to trigger that conditional formatting. And that selected row, now 13, it's going to go directly inside B6. Okay, once that happens, the next thing I want to do is display that icon. And I want to display it directly in column Q and the row there. So we do that with the following lines of code. With the shapes, and again, we don't need to specify a shape because we're within the sheet. Delete item button. The left is going to be placed on column Q in the target row. Top is going to be placed on Q in the target row. And then we need to make sure that it is visible. That's it, that's all we need to do. We've assigned the macro to that, and it is that macro that we're gonna go over now. The macro that's been assigned to that is, of course, the, the item delete. So it is that macro that we're focused on here. So if B6, which is gonna contain our row, of course, if that's empty, there's nothing we can do, so we need to make sure to select an item 
to delete and exit the sub out. If we have it, then what we want to do is I want to turn application screen updating to false, right? I don't want to show anything else because I want the screen to flicker or anything like that. So I want to set the item row variable inside B6. Then what I want to do is I want to determine the last item row, right? If I know that our selected item row is 13, our last item row is 16, that's going to help us. Because if we're deleting 13, I need to copy whatever's here and I need to bring it up one row. So knowing the last row is very important. So we need to know that. So here we go. If the item row and the last item does not equal the item row, then there's a lot of things we need to do, right? If it's the last item row, it's very easy. We just delete it. But if it's the not, what I need to do then is move everything else up, right? So when we do that, I want to make sure that we can do that. So we need to determine whether it's the last row or not. So this is going to go, if the item row does not equal the last item row, then update and delete. So the first thing what I want to do is S, has it been previously saved? If it's been previously saved, we're going to have a database row right here. As soon as we save that, it's going to assign a database row. What was that? 1011112. That's the one. Let's go back. 10112. That's the one we were just on. Okay, so if it's been, now that it's been previously saved, notice it's got a database row. However, if we add a new item, it doesn't have a database row. It has not, it doesn't have an order items row. This is a database row. As soon as we save it, it's going to be assigned 48 as the next available row. Okay, so notice these others have been assigned 35, 36, 37, 38. So they've been assigned there, okay? So we know that they've been assigned there, all right? So let's bring it over here, order items. Okay, so each one of these order items takes on that item row. So let's, this doesn't look right. Oh, we just updated that. Okay, so that next item one, let's add one, make sure that that's working right. I want to make sure. All right, so we're going to say that next, item, add 48, make sure that that 48, here it is, 1012 added 48. 48 that's what I want to know so when we pull in that different here let's go ahead and pull in that I'm going to search for that 1012 okay so we see that it's 48 is the last row so adding one so I need to determine is are we on the last row or not so if it contains s then I need to delete the row if it contains a row I also need to delete the database row but what if I want to delete 36 it's going to affect all these other rows right they're no longer so what I need to do is I need to take each one of these and renumber those so that's very important so how do we do that so first of all the item database rows can be located whatever is in s in the item row okay for update row equals one item row plus one to the last row what do I mean I need to make an update right if I delete this one I need to update starting in the item row plus one which is this going all the way to the last row which is this and I need to update those I need to decrease because if I delete 36 38 is going to become 37, 48 is going to become 47. So I need to reduce the database row by one. So we do that. If S in the item is greater than the database row, that means only if it is greater than, right? So let's take a look at that. I want to show you that one more time in here. And what that means is if this 38 is greater than 37, then we need to reduce it, right? If I'm deleting row 37, what does row 38 become? It becomes 37. So if 38 is greater than 37, then mark 38 to 37, mark 48 to 47 if I'm deleting this row, right? If I'm deleting that, I need to go this to 37 and this to 47, right? Because that's what they are. So if we look on the orders, you see now it's 47, right? So I need to update those rows. So that's just what I do here. So if S in the update row is greater than the update, then all we need to do S, the value of the database row, equals s in the value minus one decrease the database row only if it's greater if it's less it doesn't matter okay so we're just going to run that little loop to check it out so now that we've updated all this now what i want to do is i want to now i'm ready to delete the entire row so inside the order at order items the database there the item database row and the item database row entire row delete delete database item okay that's very important delete database row so we're deleting the entire row okay so next up what do we want to do on also on the POS, I want to clear out the current row and I want to bring everything else up, assuming that it's not the last row. So we do that here. M through row O and clear contents, clear all the item details. Also, I want to clear R and S. We need to clear out here anything that might be here, the UPC and the database row. So we're going to clear those out. Once those are cleared out, what I want to do then is I want to go in the row below. Let's say I'm clear. Let's add a few more items here. Let's say I'm going to, let's say I want to delete this one. The row below, I want to copy these items. I want to bring them up one single row. We do that here. So M in the item row plus one, the row below, and O in the last item row. We're going to copy that. 
And what I want to do is I want to paste the values. I don't want to paste the formats. I just want to paste the values in there. And then what I want to do is I also want to paste the formulas. Also, excuse me, also in R and S, I want to do the same thing. So it's going to be M through O, M through O. We don't need to worry about the formula. And also R through S. So bringing both of those up bringing them okay we're keeping the totals just the way they are and then also we're doing that so once we do that we're pasting the values then we can cut copy mode application equals false okay so basically we're turning off the cut dancing ants so that's it so then we're clearing the last line row that's it and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna rerun this to reset the footer remember that also resets the totals and it resets this so it resets that so all I have to do is delete the row and it's gonna reset everything else and automatically notice some it goes all the way to the last row it's always perfect just like that great so that is how we do the reset so next up so how do we actually save an order well that's relatively easy all I need to do in this case is take this information and save it to our orders here. So I want the order ID, the date and time, the cashier, the total payment or change, if anything. And then also I want to save each individual item into their row. If there's already a row, I want to update the row. If not, I want to add a new row. So that's just what we're going to do inside this macro. So let's take a look at that inside here. So let's add, let's click next. We'll add a new one. We'll add some information. Nothing's been saved here. And then we'll, uh, let's find something different, some milk or something and some cheese. I like cheese. So we need cheese here. Okay. All right, so now that we got a few cheese, we got a nice little item list. So what we want to do is save it. Notice it's a brand new order. There's no database rows associated with it, right? 1013, notice that's the next available row. How do we know that? Well, we've got just three things. I've got an order row. What is the order row? The order row is going to be based on whatever is in right here. We've got order ID is a named range, order ID. So we're going to run a match and be based on what's in 07. If it comes up empty, why would it come up empty? Because it doesn't exist inside our orders, right? 1013 doesn't exist yet. So it's not found, therefore it's gonna be empty. If it's not found, we know it's a new order. If it is found, for example, if I search for 1012, that is found, right? So we see that and we know that that does have an order row associated with that. We know the next order row ID. I wanna know the next one that's gonna be coming up. And that's 1013. We can use the max formula as we've done before. The order ID, the max of all the orders. Make sure that all of our orders ID are numerical. And plus one, we wanna set the minimum of, let's say in this case, 10,000. If there's an error, there would be an error maybe because there's no data. So if there is, of course, then we set it to one. 10,000. Yeah, it's just going to set the original. So basically, the next one's going to be here. And then what we need to do is I need for new orders, when I click next, all I need to do is take this next order and I need to place it right inside here in 07. So once we have that new order ID, we put some items in here and we have a lot of cheese here. So now that we have that there, we, we're setting up for the next order. So I want to know is it an existing order. If this is blank, it's a new order. So we're going to, that's the first thing we want to check inside the macro. Is it new or is it existing? So save and next is one row. First, I want the last item row based on M. We went over that. If last item row is 11, that means there's no items in there. So we need to let these know. Please add items to this order before saving, right? There's no items. So we got to have, if B2, here we go. If B2 is empty, it's a new order. Else, it's an existing order. The order row is whatever's in B2. If it's a new order, what the order row is going to be the first available one on the order. So that's good. Order. And then all we're going to do is we're going to take that order, take that whatever's located in 07, and we are going, because we've already placed it in here, it's all or that new order is already in here in 07, and all I need to do is place it directly in the first available inside A in the first available row. That's gonna set that up. Next up, all we need to do is set the date, time, cashier, payment, charge. That's all we need to do. So regardless if it is a new order, or if it's an existing order, we're gonna do that, placing the date, the cashier, CD, pay to change. So basically all these are just value to value sales. But what about the order items? Now I wanna set the order items. I wanna save, save the order, I saved all this information, but now I need to save the individual order items. And we take a look here, we've got all this information that we're going to need to save. But we're gonna take a look inside of PO6. So I'm gonna run a loop from 11 all the way to the last row. The first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna check to see if there's a database row. If there is a database row, I'm gonna save it to that database row. If it's not, I'm gonna create a brand new row. I'm gonna to go to the bottom of this, create a brand new row. I'm gonna put that order ID in here. I'm gonna put the rest of the information in here. So that's just what we do inside the code. So create our loop for item row. 11 to the last item row. If S 
and the item row equals empty, then it's a new item, right? No database row, no database row, okay, in that instance. So again, we're gonna create a brand, the first available one, order items is our sheet, the first available, first available row, first available row. Okay, once we have that, then what I wanna do inside A in that sheet, I'm gonna take whatever's in 07, that sets the order ID. Once we have the order ID, I wanna take also in H, column H here, I wanna set that row, that we only do that for new items, so we only do that once. H is gonna set the row, we're gonna use a formula here because we want it dynamic we want those rows to change automatically if one gets deleted that's why we're using a formula then also inside s i want to take that database for new items i once we've done it I, whatever that is i want to take it and save it in here i want to put that database directly in here so that's going to do it. even though we've just cleared it out save it that's kind of important in case we want to make changes all right else what if it's an existing item if it's an existing item i'm just going to get the database row from out everything else b c and g b through r we're going to get the upc code and put it in b right it's going to come from r whatever's here in r we're going to take directly and we're going to put in column b here next up i need the item name the quantity and the price well c through e can come directly from here m through o so we can bring all of that in and also including the total if we want we could bring in the total here so we know the total so f we do then order row then all we need is the order row inside g so we do just that c through f is going to equal m through p bringing the item name the quantity the price and the total into the database lastly g is going to be set the item row in g this is the row on the pos here that tells us what row so when it comes back inside we know what row to place i know this is going in row 11 here i know one's going in 12 and 13 and 14 so i know what row to place it in so we understand that so that's all we do so that's all we just loop through all the items next up what i want to do is i want to clear everything from m11 through s right not only we're we saving it but we're getting ready for the next order so as soon as next does two things it saves it and it clears it out of the next order. So when I click next, it's gonna assign those rows and click next and get us all ready. So the next thing we need is clear it. M all the way through S and down, clearing that out, getting it ready for the next order. So that's what we're doing in the next part of the macro, we're simply getting it ready for the next order, clear the order. Then 07 is gonna take on the next order row, right? We want the next order row. We're gonna reset the footer and select K3. Now we're ready for the next order cool that's it that's all we have to do to set the order okay but what about when we search an order right what if i want to search an order like the one we just entered 1013 i want to load that order in so how do we do that we do that with a single macro and that's going to be the last macro that we're going to cover today that's it so it's very very simple and we'll make over a few other items as well so what i want to do is i want to create just a simple input box i want i've got an icon here now keep in mind that this icon we do have to do print too hey i got an idea how about we add the print Print inside patreon right although you should be able to do print i haven't done this macro yet it is a very simple macro let's see if you can do it yourself if not i will be have it available on patreon because we're already long on this so all we need to do for print is figure out the last row and set our print range dynamically and print it very very simple two line macro three line macro we're going to save that for patreon i'll have that solution plus of course on patreon if you want to see any features that i missed or any fix or you want me to focus on any area let me know this week and then i'm going to create another video and i'm going to create an updated workbook and i'm going to place those directly inside patreon for those of our patrons so for the gold and silver that'll be for you all right so i've got a little icon here i've assigned a macro to that called order item load it is that macro the first thing i want to do is create an input box very simply please enter an order id to load so once we have that into a variable called order id then what I want to do is I want to clear whatever's there, M11 through S9. We're going to clear that entire order. We're going to reset the footer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take 07 and we're going to put that uh, receipt order right here. So if I put it in 10112, I want 07 to take on that receipt number or order ID. Either one is the same. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at B2. If B2 is empty, we know that there's an incorrect order number. If B2 contains a value, we know that there's a row associated with it and we can load it in. So we're going to look to that. B2 is going to tell us that. If it's empty, then we're going to say order not found. Please enter a correct order ID. And then we're going to clear the contents of 07 through P7. It's a merged cell here. Keep in mind, this is a merged cell. That's why we have to clear 07 through P7. We're clearing that out and giving them another opportunity if they would like okay then we're going to exit the sub we can't load it if there's no order row assuming that there is an order row here order row equals b2 
There's our order row. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to set the date and time, right? I know the order row. So now all I need to do is take the date and time, take the cashier, take the payment here, and put all those into their cells. So they're going to come directly from the orders. The date and time, the cashier, and not the total, that's calculated, not the change, that's calculated, but only the payment, that's not calculated, right? So I want to take one, two, three things and place them directly inside here, one, two, and three. And we do just that with the three lines of code right here, one, two, and three, placing the date, time, cashier, and pay. Okay, next up is the order items row. Now, when we have an order item, we know it's 112, but I want to extract only those items associated with 112, 1012. So how do we do that? Well, we can use another advanced filter. And I've got one right here, an advanced filter here. So all I'm going to do is put the criteria of the order number in. Then I'm going to run an advanced filter of all these items. I'm going to extract only those items for that order. Then I'm going to loop from three all the way to the last row, determine what row I'm going to be placing that in. And then I'm going to place the UPC, the item name, the quantity. I'm going to place all that directly inside our POS here, placing it in here, along with the UPC and the database row here. That's just all we need to do inside this macro. So we're going to do that, setting our criteria, determining the last row. If the last row means we have no products for less than three, we're going to exit the sub out. We're setting our uh, advanced filter starting at A2 through H. Here's our A2 all the way through H here. Going to set our original data here. Our criteria is going to be J2 through J3. And our results are going to come all the way from L through S. So that's just what we do inside that J2 through J3 is going to take on our criteria, L2 through LS. Next up, I want to determine the last result row. What is the last result row? In this case, it's seven, but if it's less than three, then we need to exit out. That means there's no data. If the last result was less than three, then exit the sub. For the result row equals three to the last result, we're going to loop through all the results. Again, doing just what I said, placing the order row in column R. M through O is going to take our uh, UPC, excuse me, M through O is going to take our item name, our quantity, and our price. Item name, quantity, price, I'm going to bring it in through M through O. Again here, item name, quantity, and price, it's going to go directly inside M N and O right here. And our formula is going to take care of that P through 11. And then next up, we just need to add that formula in right here. P is going to take on that formula. Equals N in the order row times O in the order row. This is going to set that total formula on a line by line basis. Next up, what we want to do is I want to add that UPC and I want to add the database row. UPC and the database row. That is it. That's all we have to do. Okay, so the next, and lastly, all we need to do is run the macro to set the footer. Okay, so that's going to load it up very, very easily. All we need to do is just simply add it, and it's going to load that order up automatically just like that. If I put in a payment here of 60, and then we save it, it is that payment that's going to be saved automatically just like that. So if I enter that payment 101 two here there we go okay so our 1013 i think that's what it was there we go that payment 60 is going to come back because it's automatically loaded all right well thanks you so much it's been a really incredible training the mobile scanning point of sale we've learned how to create this really incredible menu with this dynamic type we've also learned how to create products and add products dynamically into a menu we've also used conditional formatting we've created this really really cool receipt and added an incredible barcode to pc where we can use our mobile phone and computer to automatically scan in barcodes with our mobile phone very quickly very easily along with saving orders deleting items and loading orders with a really great search field it's been an incredible training go ahead and pick up the barcode to pc that's really cool I'll include the links down below don't forget to excel for freelancers they'll get you a 10 percent discount of course if you like my applications my products i also have the 200 template workbook file that's just 77 dollars that would help us out all right thanks so much and we'll see you next week for another amazing training mm -hmm.